I would like to think that that baby is with my dad, so. That he actually got a grandchild. Hi, Mal Pals and New Pals. Today's video is so different from my normal content, but I have been, if you haven't seen the other videos, kind of documenting my whole process as a 30 year old woman getting her tubes tied, deciding to stop taking birth control and all that stuff. If you'd like to see those videos on why I made that decision with my husband and also like the surgery, after the surgery, how I was feeling. You, you talk about hormones. I will leave those below. I think that will make a lot more sense. You watch those first, but also this could be totally separate. So your choice. I've got, ow, Chewy here. You went down? Well, I don't have Chewy now. I've got my matcha tea. <laughs> this is going to be a very informative video if you are somebody who has decided to stop taking birth control, whether you have gotten your tubes tied, tubal ligation, whatever you have done surgery wise, or you're just deciding to get off hormones because it's terrible for your body and your doctor doesn't tell you that and it really sucks as a woman as you really only have a few options which I didn't realize being on birth control can actually cause depression and anxiety which makes a lot of sense I mean I've gone through a lot in my life so this did not help compounding birth control on top of traumatic experiences during my childhood and teenage years. So if you're somebody or a young woman watching this now, always play it safe, safe sex, abstinence, whatever you choose, you know, be safe with you and your body. Your sexuality is completely natural and normal. I'm just trying to speak of my experience and what I've learned. And I do believe that birth control takes away so much of ourselves as women and you can do your own research and Google what hormones, artificial hormones can do to a young woman's body. I am one of those young women. I was on birth control for 16 years. I am 30 now. I started at 14 because I had terrible cramps and terrible periods and endometriosis ran in my family and it was supposed to help and all these things, which it did, which it did help with the pain and all that kind of stuff. But I pretty much started birth control as soon as I got a period. So I have never had a normal cycle up until the past two months and I'm a 30 year old woman. I hope I don't have like matcha chunks on my mouth. One of my recent vlogs, I'll show you how I make it. I'll link that below or just go to my vlog channel. I am someone who has never had to pay attention to are my periods regular, uh, you know, ovulation and cycles and why I'm feeling certain ways because I've been on artificial hormones my entire life. And for those of you who don't know, taking a birth control pill or any type of birth control that has a hormone release actually tricks your body into thinking that you are pregnant. So the periods that you do have on birth control are actually just your body going through withdrawals of hormones. It's not even a natural period. And that is just crazy to, for me to think about. And that's what I've been dealing with for 16 years. So I'm so glad that was one of my biggest things about having my tubal ligation other than my health and not being able to have a child. Got a lot of questions. Why didn't your husband get your, get it, you know, snipped and you shouldn't. And I address that, you know, a vasectomy, there is, a very slight chance the vas deferens grow back. I chose to do tubal ligation where they clamp my tubes, which means nothing's getting past there. Things can happen. You can have an eptop, 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 oh, why can't I say that word? You can have a pregnancy outside of the uterus and that's a very unfortunate experience. So that's way less of a chance than the vasectomy deal because a lot of people have surprises when men get vasectomies. And for me, if Keegan got a vasectomy, okay, yay, we don't want to have kids because of my health and that kind of stuff. But I would have still stayed on birth control because I just don't want to take that chance. And this was a big decision for me to just an all encompassing getting off birth control, making the responsible decision 
to, you know, say, hey, I can't take care of a child. I can barely take care of myself. Pregnancy would be too risky. That's why I got a tubal ligation to sum it up for you. Past two months have been, needless to say, very interesting. And I feel as though I have experienced like a new me. And I don't mean in like, whoa, all these changes and I'm a new woman and all this stuff, but I have noticed pretty big differences in my body itself. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Also of birth control, um, it puts you at risk for stroke. It puts you at risk for so much. And it just, it's one of those things. It's kind of like, oh, you got a headache, pop a Tylenol. Oh, you got a headache, you know, take an ibuprofen, naproxen, whatever. And you don't really think about it because they're, they're just social medical norms and it's just, they shouldn't be. Even those things are very damaging to the body. Really quick before we begin, I wanna recommend a book. Uh, my husband actually got me this because he did research, probably because he was scared that my hormones were gonna go crazy, but no, he's been super helpful. Um, woman code. I have not finished this book. It is perfect your cycle, amplify your fertility, supercharge your sex drive and become a power source. If you're interested in getting off birth control or just interested in overall kind of having control over your body because for the longest time I was just taking birth control and that was it. That was the daily okay and that was the daily this is what we do type of thing. Just wanted to recommend that to any woman who is interested in kind of knowing more about your body because we really should. I grew up in a household where sex and sexuality was not discussed. I grew up in a very strict uh, religious household so I never really knew much about anything. I'll just put it that way and I don't Personally, if I had a daughter, I know that was my parents' choice, but if I had a daughter, I think that discussions would be more open because now at 30, not knowing so much, I mean, I know more about sex, obviously, but I'm talking about as far as your, the natural things of your body not being so taboo. But back then, I mean, growing up, that's the, that's the sad part is a woman's body was so taboo and, I, and I'm and i very thankful for the progress we've made as women that it's not so taboo to talk about your period or talk about your sexuality or your sex drive or whatever. We've come a long way, even if you didn't grow up in a strict religious household, it was kind of always that way in society. Like woman's body, let's, Keep that to a whisper. So the first thing I want to discuss is hair loss, okay? So I read a lot about this and heard and watched a lot of YouTube videos about this. Hair loss, it doesn't affect everyone, but it has affected me greatly. And I am not someone that can afford to lose any more hair. I mean, like literally I'll split my whole head of hair. This is all the hair I have. And I've lost already so much of it. And this is it guys. This is all the hair on my head. You know what I'm saying? And I was already, I was like going through growing my hair out and I was so excited to be doing that. And then seeing your hair come out when you're now I've, I will, let me pause right here. I've been through this before when I have started a, a new chemotherapy and then started infusions and things like that. I've experienced hair loss before and it's kind of, you know, my body regulates it. It's still, I guess this time it was different because it was like a different reason and that's totally probably psychological. Just this whole thing, the past two months kind of encompassed like me feeling completely out of control of what was happening. And for me, that is a hard thing because A, I have anxiety. B, I don't care if you believe in um, freaking, what is it, astrology sign, I'm a Virgo. I like to say stay safe. And if I can't do it perfectly, I don't wanna do it at all. And that's not necessarily a flaw, that's just who I am. So not having control over certain things, especially with my body, has put me in a different headspace that I don't normally go to. And two, I have what is uh, called, oh, Crap, what did my psychiatrist say? I do this thing, safety, like safety behaviors. Like I've done this since I was a kid. When I would go to take a shower and I would reach for a towel and then I would feel like, oh my God, you can't use this towel because if you use this towel, you're gonna have a bad day. And then I would have to touch like several towels until I could feel like that one was okay to use. And then it started with, I had to use the same exact amount of shampoo as I did the day before, or my day was gonna be bad or something bad was gonna happen. My psychiatrist explained like when there's trauma, actually with children, 
you do this because it it's like your brain mimics a sense of security for itself, a false sense of security. You feel not like you are consciously trying to control situations, but it's a safety behavior as you wanna keep yourself feeling safe. And uh, there's all reasons for that. I don't think I'll ever talk about that kind of stuff publicly, but that behavior in me happening more the past two months than it as ever has. And now as an adult, it'll be coffee mugs. I'll go and I'll have to, you know, I had a good day before. So it's like, okay, I'll use this mug. Or if I've had a bad day when I've worn a certain shirt, I won't wear that shirt for a very long time, but I will have to touch and feel, okay, like this is the right one. And if you do this, this will happen. And if you do this, this won't happen and things like that. So that's kind of amped up and it is not fun. So I know maybe that's like a small percentage of you who might deal with that, but I just wanted to tell you that that's just kind of what I've experienced. And if you're somebody with anxiety, depression, or history of trauma, that that might increase a little bit uh, just because of the feeling of being out of control over your body. I went off on a tangent. And the hair loss thing, I guess that's where I was coming from. This was like, I'm 30, this should not be happening. Like I should know more about my own body. It was a bunch of feelings and emotions. And then as a woman, when you lose your hair, when you're washing your hair and it just comes out and clumps or you're brushing it, and it just comes out and clumps. It's just not, it's not a good feeling. Already 20 minutes, right? Yeah, sorry. And I'm, that's one bullet point. The next note I wanna make is mood swings. And I think a lot of this like I discussed the safety behavior. So that would cause me to be in a bad headspace. And then I would just go whoosh into a dark headspace. And for me, being in therapy, being on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication, I've learned, you know, mental mechanisms to get out of that headspace, but it has been harder for me to get out of that and kind of go back to my training per se, how to get out of a dark moment. So I found myself, you know, like really closing myself off and wanting to crawl into a hole and not come out for three months. And it's just been mood swings. I, would, I wouldn't even say anger. It's gonna be different for everybody. For me, it's been more sadness and dark, like dark pits of depression. And I already battled depression but this time it's been different because it's been hormonal and so it's like it's harder to reel yourself back in. And that's what's so great about this book is that it talks about even like when you're in those moments, what kinds of foods to eat and things like that. I need to get on this and like finish this book. And there are other books out. I'm not saying you have to buy this book non-spawn. This next bullet point is exactly right. Sugar cravings. That was another thing that I avoided before the surgery because I knew that sugar cravings were gonna like kick into gear from what I read. I've never been a sweets person. I've always been like a hot and spicy, savory, that's my weakness. Oh my God, like literally the other night, like Milky Way came out with like this fudge Milky Way, it's gluten-free and I bought the two packs, it was two candy bars and I ate both. And normally, like just a few bites of a Milky Way would make me so sick. Like I'm just not a sweets person, but I can down, you know, 20 extra blazing wings from wild Buffalo Wild Wings. Like it's like for real, like it's just been completely opposite cravings, completely opposite all that stuff. So that's another thing, it's hormones. So if you go into this with knowledge, you can fight it a little better. And so that's why I wanted to make this video because if I can tell you from experience, if, you, if you're sitting there and you're like, okay, and trust me, like I gave in the other night, I ate the freaking Milky Way bars. But if you're sitting there and you're like, this is my hormones, this is not me, this is not a real craving. And if you're like me and you've been on a fitness journey and all that stuff, and then you give in to every single sugar temptation and then, you, and then you're like, oh, I'm not having any progress, then boom, 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 you're circling into that dark depression moment. You know what I'm saying? Arm yourself with knowledge. I hope this video is going to be a part of that armor because, ooh, girl, I have felt Alone, 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 alone. Well, other than Keegan, but he's a man he doesn't know. I don't know anybody else who has done this, who's gotten off birth control. Thank God for blogs and YouTube at this point, you know? Should have brought this in here. 
But the next bullet point is a supplement. Uh, to supplement, and now this, especially if you are on other medications, make sure that, you know, ask your doctor, make sure this doesn't interact with other medications. But I bought the Alani New, uh, ooh, why don't I have it? I'll flash it against the, uh, not against the screen, but on the screen. And this is supposed to promote hormonal balance and things like that. And I have been taking that now for close to a month. And I feel like it has really helped me with my fatigue. And by fatigue, I don't mean, let me, let me say this, like fatigue is different than being tired. Fatigue is you are wide awake, but your body is not awake and you feel it can really make you depressed. It can really make you feel just like a piece of shit. So the Alani New supplements, I really, really like. Um, I bought them through Whitney Simmons link. I like to support people on the internet. Okay, he's up here. You up here? You up here for good? Speaking of supplements and fitness journey and all that. So my early to mid twenties, until we moved to Alaska pretty much, and then it all just kind of went bleh, on a different medication, gained weight, it was depressing, it was dark all the time when we lived in Alaska, cold, super depressing. And everybody would say, you're gonna gain that, you know, basically freshman 15 of Alaska. I'm like, I'm not gonna gain weight. Like I'm super fit and like whatever. No, I gained the weight and it didn't come off until recently. So, and that was, since 2014, 15. I worked out so hard, you guys, so hard, and I tried so hard to gain muscle. I was always that skinny girl. I was always so skinny, and I wanted to put on muscle. So I think I was like, I think I was actually 19 when I started that. I really got into, uh, you know, taking supplements, like protein powder, not like getting on the juice or anything. <clears throat> Isn't that the term for steroids? Whatever, I didn't get on steroids or anything. I was just like protein powder, working out all the time correctly. And I just, I never really saw a lot of muscle gain over the years that I should have seen a, a vast improvement. And then now that I've gotten off birth control and I've read a lot, these synthetic hormones basically don't allow your body to develop because you're overloaded with estrogen and you, you're out of balance with your testosterone and you, it's hard to, to gain muscle. So unless you're doing other supplements and I never, I did like weightlifting naturally. So it was very hard for me. And I, for, you know, I should have said this in the beginning. I was on the three months at a time it wasn't Yasmin, it was called Sprintech. And it was, I would take three packs. So three months I wouldn't have a period, then I have a period, whatever. But that's the thing, you don't have to have a period. It's like, oh, that's dangerous. They're not real periods. It doesn't even matter. You could actually just skip your period the whole time and it wouldn't matter because your body legit, the hormones make it think that it's pregnant and that's why you can't get pregnant. So I was on Sprintec for years and years and years. So I was never on the patch or Implanon or I never had an IUD or anything like that. But the thing that I have noticed, especially in my upper body, my body has been responding to working out so much better. One thing is at my most fit, I barely had an ab and <laughs> now I actually like, have abs and it's weird because it didn't take that long and i'm like i worked so hard from my early to mid 20s to like be super fit and like gain muscle in my arms i have more muscle in my arms than i did back then and it's only been two months also another thing um if you do work out maybe this will make sense to you I have never had, it's like, oh, it's your mind muscle connection. I've never understood that. I just thought here I am, I'm working out and blah, 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 blah. And it's seriously like, and this was something that I didn't even really pay attention to. Like I'm, like, like, I'm looking out for it. Obviously you can see physical changes in your body, it's obvious. But all of a sudden it was like my mind when I would do certain exercises, well, any exercise, whatever muscle group I was working, my mind would go to that area instead of like, oh, I gotta get through this workout and oh, I want gains and oh, I wanna lose this or that or gain this much muscle. So that's been crazy. Like I finally, that finally clicked and then I kind of looked it up, which I'm sure it's in this book, but I haven't read it all the way yet. But that's a thing. Once you get off birth control, your mind-body connection is like so much better and it it's incredible. It's incredible and I think 
obviously that's why my muscles and my body are responding so much faster to exercises and diet. The only thing that is slowing me down are those sugar cravings. And I finally got into where I'm like, okay, Mallory, like it's not you, it's that little my hormones are out of balance, so pay attention to the foods that you need to eat to get them in balance because truly food is medicine and you should eat food as medicine so you don't have to eat your medicine as food. If you've never heard that, that's a saying. So the next thing was something that I was very concerned about. And again, is something else that it really depends. My biggest thing was I've never had problems with acne. Now my skin is breakout prone, very sensitive, like none of that's changed. But I was very afraid of ending up with acne because I wouldn't know like the first thing to do because I'd, I've never struggled with it. And and then Keegan and I were talking about it. He was like, well, you probably didn't struggle with it because you were on birth control. And birth control is another thing that doctors go, here, take this so you don't have acne anymore. And it helps with acne. So I've really been concerned, but so far so good. I haven't had any crazy breakouts. I think I've had like literally one. And I will say this, there was one time where I got on I forget what the brand was. It might have even been Yasmin. And I would get those very painful, um, large, uh, what are those called? Like cystic, like right here. And if you have breakouts here, like around your chin and your mouth as a woman, it's hormonal. I guess for everybody that would be, I don't know. But I know for women it's hormonal. So that was like really, really bad. And then I got off that. And that, again, that was a take every, every you know month for three months and then have a period. I will keep you guys updated. I have heard that it, has take, it takes years for your body to kind of regulate. Let's get into what my first, <laughs> if this is too graphic, I'm about to get into what my first period was like being off birth control for the first time. So strap in. What was crazy was my very first period was exactly 30 days after I stopped taking birth control. So I stopped taking birth control March 5th, the day of my surgery, and then got my period April 5th, which was exactly a month. And a lot of you, I, I tweeted out something and a lot of you were like, oh, just wait, like it's gonna get crazy, yada, yada, yada. And the first few days were not that bad. Here, yeah, I literally have on here, first few days, fine. The end, really bad, more bleeding than ever in my life. Yeah, that's pretty much that sums it up. I have never been like a heavy bleeder. First few days were fine. I was going about my normal life and I was so nervous, you guys. I was so nervous my first period was going to be traumatizing due to the fact that my periods were traumatizing uh, before I got on birth control. Like they were so bad that I missed a lot of school. The pain was so bad I was throwing up. It just seemed like the best option at the time and it probably was so I could stay in school and you know, to get on birth control. I was really like, okay, strap in. This is gonna be bad. This is gonna be bad, 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 bad. First few days, I think it was like day five and I was like, oh, I'm coasting through this. Boom, like bled more than ever in my entire life. Pain wasn't as bad as it was when I first, when I, before I started taking birth control, but the bleeding was like shocking. I don't know if I've talked about this publicly, but since we're going there, um, I did have a miscarriage once and the bleeding was about like that this time. So that also kind of brought up a lot of mental, like, this sucks. Let's took a turn. Yeah, I don't know if I, have I talked about that publicly? Well, here we are now. Um, after the miscarriage, I actually had a crazy dream that I was holding a baby and it was probably like six months old. It wasn't like a newborn. And I was holding this baby and I was just thinking, oh my gosh, this baby's so beautiful. And I was saying it and there were other people in the room. I didn't know who they were, but in the dream, God told me, this is your baby. So, so there's that for you. <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. That's, that was years and years ago. Um, oh, this is not where, this is supposed to be informative, not emotional, right? But it's some damn hormones, but, um, Shit, I should have like, I didn't expect this. Anyway, 
So, woo girl. I think also what is easy for me to accept not having kids and stuff too because of health reasons is that like my dad would never be around to see them. Dad walked me down the aisle, you know, but he would never see my babies, so. He saw this guy, my dad got me Chewy. Actually a month before he passed away. Why am I whispering? You probably guys can't hear me, but I would like to think that that baby is with my dad, so. That he actually got a grandchild. And this is a crazy thought, but like, it's almost like I would rather have that miscarriage and that baby be in heaven and not have to face all this shit in this world and this just cruelty and, and then my dad have a grandkid, you know? That's how I see it. I should use the pages of this book to blot my eyes. These lashes are too expensive to do this to. Just, I don't know. If you're a woman out there that has kids, you're amazing and you should feel amazing. And if you're a woman out there who decides not to have kids, you're amazing, you should feel amazing. And if you're a woman out there who can't have kids or have gone through a miscarriage, you're amazing and you should feel amazing, okay? Okay, so whatever that was emotional. Just so you know, um, I hope that you all love yourself like literally to death. It's such a journey to love yourself. It's a journey almost every day for me to really love myself and accept myself and think, oh, you're cool, like I like you, you know? I don't know, I hope this helps someone out there. I know this is like personal experience, but I have one last thing to say. <laughs> Today is May 4th when I'm filming this and I started my period. So, so far, my period is pretty regular. I, not to, no, no TMI, but maybe that's why I'm crying. Maybe that, no, 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 that's actually pretty freaking sad, actually. I probably should cry at that. I don't know, sometimes I think about sharing things on the internet and I'm like, why am I saying this? And then it's like, then I get messages and emails and I'm like, okay, this is why. I have mild cramping, like it's not so fun sitting straight up in bed right now, but I really wanted to film this. And it's ironic because as I was getting ready to film this, I started my period and I was like, huh, I think it's a sign that I should, this is the video to film today. If you guys have any questions or something I didn't cover or whatever, leave them in the comments below and um, you know, just be, just be nice to each other. You know, if you're not, too, if you're not nice, then sorry, block, delete. That's just the way it is. Uh, I've had a lot of hate on these videos t talking about my body and my personal decisions, which is fine, expected, so stupid, but I don't have to sit here and read them and you guys don't have to be harassed by idiots either. So block, delete. Give this video a thumbs up and ring the bell. If you want to, no pressure. Don't get mad at me, just saying. All right, I love you, Mouth House, and I will see you in Friday's video, hopefully. Bye, you guys.